Okay, good afternoon. We'll be giving another update relative to the Steve Stevens, the Facebook shooter case this afternoon. Please bear in mind that this investigation is in the very early stages and though we will take questions, there's still some information to be gathered. Speaking this afternoon will be Mayor Frank Jackson, Chief Calvin Williams, Special Agent in Charge of the Cleveland Office of the FBI, Steve Anthony, and Pete, Ma Pete Elliott, U.S. Marshal. <clears throat> well, we have a closure in regards to the search for Steve Stevens. Uh, the, the chief and the other law enforcement will give you the details of that. I want to, um, again, give our condolence to the family, the Godwin family, and uh, all of its members, and really, again, thank them for the way in which they've handled this very tragic situation, not only for them personally, but for the community as large. I uh, also want to thank the community. There was a lot of support from the community, not only in terms of the family, but in terms of the law enforcement efforts and the kind of information and tips that we were given. And I want to thank our partners, the federal, state, county, local, uh, and uh, other state uh, law enforcement agencies that helped in this regard. Uh, all, and finally, I want to emphasize the fact that uh, uh, this uh, particular incident received a lot of attention, and rightfully so, because it was a loss of innocence, uh, an innocent victim. Uh, we, however, have many, many um, homicides, not only in Cleveland, but throughout this nation. And ultimately, I believe one of the things this has taught us, that we cannot resolve this underlining issues of, of violence, particularly gun violence, if we do not function and operate and have the same compassion and, and, and um, commitment that we've shown here as a community. And, and finally, I want to thank you as the media. You were very helpful to us in keeping uh, things straight, keeping the facts straight, reporting the stories in a way that um, that really helped us to be able to do our job. So, Chief. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> I want to uh, officially announce that the uh, search for Steve Stevens has ended. At approximately uh, a little bit after 11 today, uh, Pennsylvania State Police officers received a tip that the vehicle that we were looking for, the white Ford Fusion, was in a McDonald's parking lot uh, near Erie, PA. Those officers responded. The vehicle fled from that area. There was a short pursuit in which the vehicle was stopped. As the officers approached that vehicle, Steve Stevens took his own life. We are grateful to the people that gave this tip to the Pennsylvania State Police. Uh, we are grateful that this has ended. Uh, we would pref prefer that uh, it had not ended this way because there are a lot of questions, I'm sure, that not only the family but uh, the city in general would have had for Steve as to why this transpired. Uh, again, our condolences are, are still with uh, the family of Mr. Godwin, and uh, you, you, you've all heard them on the news lately. Uh, they were forgiving, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they were forgiving. Uh, of Steve for committing this uh, atrocious act. And then we need to follow their lead. Uh, as the mayor stated, there are other victims in the city and around this country, and we continue to work hard uh, to bring closure to those families also. There are a lot of things about this that we don't know, uh, a lot of circumstances that we're still gathering. Uh, as uh, Detective Chotz said, Sergeant Chotz, I'm sorry, stated, uh, we're in the early stages of this. Uh, it's been probably less than an hour since this uh, transpired. So as we get that information, we'll get it out. Uh, but I know that uh, uh, my partners here, uh, Steve and Pete, uh, would like to come up and say a couple words. Steve. Uh, just real quick, as we discussed, the goal from 2 o'clock Easter Day was to make sure that no one else uh, was a victim of violence by Mr. Stevens. And even though investigation is continuing, we believe that to be the case. That was the number one goal. Obviously, the other goal was to, was to bring Mr. Stevens uh, in safely. And unfortunately, uh, he chose that not to be the case. 
So again, we thank uh, the public, as we said from, from day one, less than four, 45 hours ago, the public would be key uh, to bring in the tip that was needed to resolve this situation. That's exactly what happened, and kudos to the Pennsylvania State Police for doing an outstanding job in, uh, in addressing the tip and um, bringing this to a conclusion. With that, Pete. Thanks, Steve. Just real quick, um, I want to thank all the men and women uh, standing up here um, for their dedication, but I also want to thank all the deputy U.S. Marshals, the FBI agents, the Cleveland police officers, all the officers who have been up all night for the last couple of nights working on this case, um, pursuing every single lead. So I want to thank them uh, for their dedication and their service. Thank you. Before we take questions, just really quick, no information regarding law enforcement tactics is going to be discussed. So we'll open it up now for questions. Chief. Again, we're, we're, we're yeah, we're trying to get that information from the uh, Pennsylvania State Police officers. Uh, we initially uh, got the information it was a short pursuit uh, in which uh, the vehicle was stopped. Uh, as the officers approached the vehicle, Steve took his own life. Did you suspect it was already there? We had that ping that we talked about yesterday. Um, we we searched. Uh, that area prior. Uh, we searched that area initially on, on uh, Sunday when we got that ping uh, up in that area of Erie, PA. Uh, we were in the process today of going back and doing a more thorough search of that area, uh, both ground and air assets, uh, when this transpired. You said previously, I know the U.S. Marshals had said either Stevens had killed himself or he was being helped by someone. Um, do you guys believe that he was being harbored by anyone throughout this 48-hour period? Again, we, we don't know. I, I mean, you know, anybody that's been, uh, you know, uh, that way east uh, uh, in the Erie PA area knows there are a lot of um, places to hide. Uh, there, are, it's, there are a lot of remote areas. There are a lot of woods, uh, farms and barns and things like that. So until we actually can get our investigators up there to confer with the state police officers, and really look in the vehicle itself and, and maybe track back uh, hopefully some people that may have seen him along the way today. Uh, we won't actually know where he was and what he was doing. Did he shoot himself in the head? Is that what happened? I don't know. We don't know did that. Did he today. die on the scene? Yes, he did. You had talked this morning about, um, you know, Border Patrol was notified. You didn't know where he could be in the U.S. Is that kind of a diversion? Did you have a better idea? How did you narrow it down? Uh, I can't comment on that. If you had narrowed it down, is there a reason why you wouldn't want that information out there to everyone? Well, we put out the information, uh, first of all, locally here. Uh, we put out the information then statewide, and then we came back and we expanded that search. Uh, so as we got information uh, through leads, uh, through our investigators that have been working day and night on this, then we expanded that search area. Not that we have right now. Does he have any ties there? Did you know? Not that we know of right now. But again, we're um, taking a slow, cautious approach with this right now. Uh, we're making sure that we go back and retrace as much as possible. Uh, there may be connections that we don't know about. And if people in that area uh, have maybe seen him and not put two and two together over the last couple of days, we're still encouraging them to call that. Uh, FBI tip line. So this was a private citizen who called like 911? Again, I, I don't know. Uh, okay. When we get that information, we'll Can get it out to you guys. I wouldn't say a higher level of alert, but uh, we did have people actually on the ground in, in that area on several occasions looking at not only the surrounding area, but that immediate area for the ping. Have you had a police, pre a police presence in Erie since Sunday? No, not a Cleveland police presence, but our, our federal partners were engaged in that area. Are you guys disappointed? Have you done anything to alter his appearance, for instance, shaving his hair? Again, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, this happened, again, less than an hour ago. So our investigators are on their way now. Uh, we have several of our federal partners already there conversing with the state police in Pennsylvania. And as soon as we get all those details, we'll definitely push that back out. Have you spoken with the families? We've spoken with all the families involved, uh, all the uh, people that are really involved in this case. Uh, they've been notified, and uh, we ask that you guys give them a little space in this. 
because for them, it's not over. So we ask that you give them some space. Are you guys right. disappointed that it ended this way? I know you touched on it a little bit, but how disappointed are you? Well, I mean, this started with one tragedy and ended, you know, with another person taking their own life. And, and you know, loss of life is a loss of life. Uh, we would like to have brought Steve in peacefully and really talk to him to find out exactly why this happened, because there may be other people out there that are in similar situations that we can help uh, by finding out why he did what he did and, and what kind of drove him to this. And, and we talked about this a little bit a couple days ago. You know, if there are people out there that are in a, what we call sometimes a dark place or they think they need help, they need to reach out and call. Uh, they can call the Division of Police and we can forward things to our Adams Board, our mental health community here uh, in Northeast Ohio. But, but if you're feeling, you know, uh, not quite right, and if there are things going on in your life that you need assistance with, you need to reach out and, and call somebody, and we'll get you that help. The Pennsylvania police said it was a brief pursuit. Do you know what the definition of brief is in this context? Short. <laughs> a block? I, I don't have the exact measurements, but that's the same information we got. Was it, it was a, a short pursuit? Police cruiser? Yes. With lights and on the whole nine yards? Yep. That's, yes, that's the way they're equipped. Do you know anything about the minutes before that? Was he eating at that McDonald's? Or no, we don't have that information. Again, as soon as we get the, the, the real finite details of this, we'll get it out to everybody. We'll be talking with the Office of Public Affairs there, too, to make sure that we have all the pertinent information to be able to give you guys a little bit more of an update. Like we said very early in the investigation, um, the Joint Information Center for media is still open and it'll stay open and as we have more information and it's timely we'll continue to put that out so thank you and one thing before we leave uh you know the marshal hit on it uh there were dozens and dozens of officers not just here in cleveland but around this country involved in this and i definitely want to thank them uh, I, I don't think we could have gotten to a resolution uh this quickly without their help and definitely without the public's help uh, that's always crucial in incidents like this. So I, I want to thank our men and women out there in law enforcement and definitely thank the people around the country that called in, uh, again, almost 400 uh, tips on this that we had to follow up on. And that just shows the vigilance of the people in this country. Did the so, partnerships created by the RMC help you to be able to mobilize quicker with federal resources, FBI, U.S. Marshals? Well, you know, um, the RNC was a big test for us, but we had these partnerships long before the RNC. I mean, I've known Steve for over 10 years. I've known Pete for over 15 years. Uh, Eric uh, from ATF, Drew. I mean, we've worked together in the city for the last 20 years. So a lot of people talked about us coming together. We're always together. You know, I call these guys and they're there just like that and, and vice versa. So there is no disconnect with law enforcement here in Northeast Ohio. No, we're not, we're, we're not even putting that energy out there. Uh, I, I think everybody has learned from this. Uh, I, I think the people on social media kind of know the power, and, and I think they know the harm it can do. So we've talked before about people not living their lives on social media and being truthful in social media and, and not harming people uh, via social media. And, you know, this is a prime example. This is something that should not have been shared around the world, period. And, you know, our kids, although they should not have seen this, I'm sure a lot have, uh, you know, they need to take this as a lesson. We can't do this in this country. We just can't do it. Chief, in that vein, have you or any of the other law enforcement officials involved had direct conversations with Facebook about how to prevent this, about this particular incident, how to prevent it? Uh, I have not had personal conversations with any social media outlet. Uh, we have direct connections with them, uh, but I'm sure this is something that's on the radar, maybe of some of our political leaders, you know, our city, state, and federal uh, leaders out here, uh, to have those conversations, not just with Facebook, but with all social media. All right, thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. <laughs>